Havoc is one of my favorite top one source C2 framework, mainly because of its evasiveness and its UI. But personally, I found the redirective setup quite confusing, and that's why I asked the creator about it, and he showcased and actually pretty much showed me how it's done. And now it's time to review it to you guys. Now, in order to set up the redirector, we have to start from the very beginning and set up a new listener because that's where the magic actually comes from. On the view tab, I can go to the listener, then click add. And from there, I can define a name, for instance, main. Now, the payload is going to be HTTPS. And now the host tab is where the magic is actually coming from. On the host tab, you can define as much redirectors as you want. So I can do like add and then add the IP address of my redirector, which is 110. Now, I don't need to touch anything else. It's automatically bind on the interface I want. And I can just click save. Now, keep in mind that my redirector is going to be set up here. And now, after that, I'm just going to do a new payload. I, if I go to the attack, I can go to the payload, I can go to the very same demon, the very same listener, and I don't need to touch anything else. Now, in usual environment, when you set up a redirector, you need to define your payload to actually know where to communicate. You need to set up your payload to communicate to the redirector. In the Havox case, that's not needed. And if you set up that on the listener page, the payload automatically knows where to communicate, which, to be honest, it's quite a smart idea and good job, C Spider. Now, let's generate one and let's change the connection and see how it works. All right, then I'm going to save my file as demon.txt onto the desktop page, save it, and from there, just host it with the Python HTTP server. Now, let me go back to my command VM machine and actually download the payload. When I do that, I can just add this, but before execution, make sure to set up my redirector. My redirector command looks like that. So, so cat this P4 minus listen 443 because I want that port to be forwarded, then fork this P4 my IP address where to redirect to, and then again the same port 443. That's all it takes to set up a very simple redirector. So after you run the command, you can not see any output, but trust me, it works. Now when I do it, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna hop back to my command via machine and then just execute the daemon. After I do it, if I go back to my C2 server, it's obvious that the beacon is up there and I can now start issuing some commands. Now, let's get into more details on how this works and why that's so amazing. Now, let me get back to my command VM machine and actually prove that the redirected traffic is going through the Ubuntu machine. So, how can we know that? And we can, of course, do it by opening Wireshark. After that, I can just open the ETH0 interface because that's where the traffic comes from. And the filter we're gonna need is IP.ADDR and that will be equal to my redirector IP, which is 0 0.0.110. After I run it, we can indeed observe that there's an HTTP traffic between my command VM machine and my redirector machine, which proves that the traffic goes from there. Another thing that proves it and is that if I go to my Ubuntu machine and actually queue the redirector process, the beacon is going to be automatically unresponsive and pretty much dead. The good thing about it is because if I go back and actually restore the redirector from there, the traffic is going to automatically be renewed. So if I do that, and now if I go back to my Havoc machine, you can indeed see that the redirector is again working. Now I have one more thing I want to test in, and that's it, and that is when you were in the listeners tab and I can do edit or actually add a new one, you can actually add more than one host. I'm interrupting the video just to say how much I appreciate every one of my Patreon sponsors. And if you have further appreciation for the channel, you can become one as well. When doing so, you can get access to my private packers, my private notes, and the ability to request videos on demand, like the one you're watching now. Thanks so much and moving on. I did not test that feature before and I'm doing it right now. Now, I'm guessing that this feature here is to be able to somehow rotate the hosts, which means that if one of them fails or gets broken down, the other can still continue to do the work. And now let's see if it's work like that. To do it and actually test it, I want to remove my current process like that. I want to actually queue the current beacon and actually do the process from the very, very beginning. So I can remove the demon.exe. I can stop Wireshark because now I'm sure that how it works and I don't need it anymore. And from here, let's restart the process. I'm going to actually queue the listener right there and I'm going to start a new one. So view listener and now add and now here main again. Now let's add two hosts. The first one is going to be the same as before, but the second one is going to be another carry machine on my network. So if I do have config, besides I see the IP address right there, it's 0.103. So I can run the same socket command there, set up the redirector, and now let's add the second host as well. Let me go back here and now do 192.168.0.103, and that should be enough. 
Now if I do save, the new listener is up in the link and now I need to generate a new beacon. Now in order for me to do that, I'm going to remove the previous one like that, host it on the new HTTP server and now let's generate a new one. Go to attack, payload, again, don't touch anything there, that's like super super nice and well done by the creator. Good job there, now generate one. Alright, save it again on the desktop as just dim because it's easier for me. Save it like that, alright, now let me get back to my command VM machine. Download it once again and of course execute it. When I do it, the beacon should be up and running once again. I can do again for my initial commands and so on. But now let's see the difference and what's going to happen if one of the redirectors goes down. I'm going to go on my Ubuntu machine and let's test it. I'm testing it live right now. Shutting down the redirector. Let me go back to my videos machine and it's still healthy. It's still running. So that's how you can ensure some kind of redundancy about your redirector setup and about your C2 infrastructure. Now, of course, obviously, if I kill the second redirector as well, it's going to actually be unresponsive. Yep. But as soon as some of the redirectors are actually being set up like that, the beacon is automatically going to start running. And I believe it should be, yeah, it should be live now. So that's a really nice system on how Havoc actually manages to, to actually cycle between every director, which makes the infrastructure more stable and more fail safe. So I have to say really good job. And we are waiting to see what else Havoc C2 is going to get included in the future and what things going to get added to it. I'm super happy with the framework and I highly recommend you guys to try it out and see if it works out for you. See ya.